This show is taped at La Seine, a space for creation and collaboration. Artists, thinkers, and creators of all stripes tell us what inspires their work, a starting point that takes us into their creative process in their own words. Welcome to Who Inspires You. Mark Laws is an actor, director, and author. He's the founder and artistic dir director of Theatre Junction. In 2005, he led the redevelopment of the Grand Theatre in Calgary, uh, one of Canada's oldest theatres, transforming it into a house for contemporary creation. His work has been shown across the world, and his latest show, Everybody Knows This Is Nowhere, recently played at Théâtre aux Écuries in Montreal. Mark, welcome. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Let me ask you right off the bat, who inspires you? Uh, well, I have many influences for sure because I'm working really on this idea of uh, performance that is very multiple. Yeah. So there are uh, influences from visual art to music to ideas to uh, um, theorists, e even philosophers. Philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's. There's multiple influences that we use all the time to create our work. So, And you recently put on a show that um, was partly influenced by Marshall McLuhan's work. Yeah. A few years ago, we did a, a piece called Sometime Between Now and When the Sun Goes Supernova. And it was really uh, talking about how uh, media and uh, the information overload uh, that is happening in our world today, uh, how that influences our consciousness. So. Got, uh, yeah, I got uh, thinking about um, uh, Marshall McLuhan and was kind of reintroduced to his work through uh, Douglas Copeland. Who wrote who, a biography of him. Exactly, yeah. So got interested in Marshall McLuhan and his ideas. So. And so McLuhan was a thinker of media. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a Canadian thinker. Um, and he was, uh, he's now considered like as a, a staple of, of media theory, but uh, when his work came out, he wasn't necessarily well received. Yeah. And it's interesting, he's from Edmonton as well. So he was born in Edmonton, yeah. which is in the West. And, and uh, I grew up in a small town in Alberta. And uh, McLuhan uh, saw the world, well, he, he, he knew that the world was changing very quickly. He was teaching in the 50s and the 60s, yeah. and uh, he knew that uh, media was really influencing how we were seeing the world, and he was really concerned that his students weren't keeping up with um, what was going on in the world and how that was uh, influencing thinking, uh, influencing public opinion, and how the propaganda machine of, of media in general was shaping our world. And uh, he really, um, was able to hit a very strange brain. Yeah. Um, and uh, Douglas Copeland talks about that a little bit. Yeah. He says that he might have been kind of borderline Asperger's. Okay. So he was able to somehow take um, all of this information that was happening and create uh, patterns out of um, disparate ideas and, uh, and kind of leap to conclusions that other people uh, couldn't see yet. So he was really ahead of his time and kind of saw that uh, the internet was going to happen maybe 20, 25 years before it happened. Indeed. So. He did write in a particular style. He wrote with aphorisms mm -hmm. a lot. And he talks about them as being probes yeah. he sends into the reader's mind. Yeah. What was that all about? <laughs> well, I think that he, yeah, he was never speaking about he, he was always trying to go around the truth because, he, you know, the truth, what is the truth anyhow? So he yeah. was using these kind of ideas like the medium is the message and then he used the medium is the massage <laughs> and he always used these kind of uh, yeah. uh, phrases to kind of, I don't know, explode in the mind of the listener or the reader and trying to tilt their, their point of view on the world 
through this, these strange riddles. And, uh, and somehow through, through that, I just like the way that that was uh, uh, making uh, or helping people to think differently about the world and see the world differently. And, and uh, yeah. And this kind of nonlinear way of, of thinking and of writing yeah. actually um, resonates with you and, and resembles the kind of theater that you, you make. Yeah. I worked as a as a director directing plays for many years, and uh, I spent a sabbatical in Europe, and then uh, worked in the opera and dance and theater, and uh, really wanted to search for a new kind of form and language that was uh, more representative of the world that uh, I was living in. Yeah. And uh, so I started to work more on montage and a multidisciplinary performance and using fragments and and uh yeah the world is not this kind of unity of time place and action anymore so started to work on how to put together performances um, in this fragmentary form that is kind of creating a new narrative how do we how do we think about the world today how do we process the world today through all these fragments that we encounter every day yeah and you work with a variety of disciplines. You work with dancers, yeah. actors, musicians. Yeah, filmmakers. And filmmakers, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you make good use of video in your, in your theater. Yeah. I wonder how that creative process comes about. Can you take us through the steps of putting something together? Well, I've been working with a small team, two dancers, an actress, a musician who plays live on stage, and a filmmaker for the last five years. Um, and uh, we get together. I have kind of a proposition of some ideas, themes, some writing. Yeah. I bring uh, visual art in for references uh, to inspire the performers, and we improvise. And we begin like that. So we just start in a room, we're like a band, and <laughs> we just start playing. And so we improvise a lot, film all of our improvisations, take that away, start to uh, create a text out of that, shoot some short films, bring all that back together, start to put them together and, and create a performance out of that. So it's a really organic process, yeah. heavily influenced by the artists that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that's how, that's how we've been shaping our work. And how do you use video actually specifically in your work? What role does it play in theater for you? Uh, it depends on the piece. Uh, sometime between now and when the sun goes supernova was really about mediated relationships so we use the video in a very specific way yeah. distancing the people from each other it was about kind of disconnection and how how uh, the screen can be between us and and uh, um, influence our relationships and maybe make us even though we're connected make us feel um, maybe lonely or disconnected but also in the the piece that we did recently uh, it was really the video was more about memory mm -hmm. because it's a past form so um, it, it was in a way a lot more simple it was just about uh, dreams and reflections and memory so we shot a lot of it on 16 millimeter super 8 and and uh, so it d depends on the piece but it really is a part of our you know, part of our everyday life, this kind of interaction with screens and... Uh we became, despite ourselves, soldiers of economic wars, passive actors of a global rampage, Responsible for actions without the power to take any. Ignorant hooligans and unknowing destroyers. Docile and obedient to the orders of the powerful. Quick to obey the law of the strongest. All eyes turned towards billboards displaying manufactured images of the Garden of Eden. To build a future, we must so first experimental the theater um, requires a bit of work from from the audience, and not all audiences are used to do, having to do that work. We're used to you know very kind of um, easy entertainment. Uh, how do you find that your your work is received? 
I think it's, uh, I'm very conscious of that fact. Yeah. And so we play a lot with pop culture as well. Okay. So there's many points of entry into the work. Uh, so I think that the work is very accessible. But yeah, it's something that a lot of uh, uh, public that come to theater, they see it as entertainment and they want to know what it is before they arrive. Yeah. And uh, this is something I'm not so interested in, in providing. They want to uh, see the trailer. <laughs> yeah, they want to see the trailer, yeah. yeah. And so I, I like this. In fact, it's political because I think that each individual spectator is very different. They see the world differently. And in our work, they're asked to interpret the world uh, through their own eyes. So how they put the, the pieces together, what does that mean to them? What do they receive from that? And then how do they process that and, and express that? So I think that's, it's very different than a passive spectator. The spectator yeah. uh, has to be engaged and uh, put together the pieces. And then it's a very satisfying and liberating experience, I think, for the, for the spectator. They're kind of part of the creation they in are. a way. Yeah, and we speak, you know, we break down the fourth wall. We really speak to the oh, yeah. public a lot during the, during the piece as well. So there's this kind of direct interaction with the public as, as well. So. You mentioned that you were also inspired by fine arts, um, visual arts. Mm -hmm. um, and um, can you tell us a bit about Marcel Zama's work, how he's been uh, uh, influential to you? Yeah, sure. Um, Marcel Zama is an artist from uh, Winnipeg, and uh, he had a collective called the Royal Art Lodge, yeah. which came out of the, the university in Manitoba. And uh, they got together every weekend and uh, drew together and painted yeah. and made work. And, and uh, so I was inspired by this kind of collective mm. creation work yeah. and how each of the artists would uh, you know, someone would draw something, have an idea, and then someone would write a little bit of text on it, and then someone would add something else to it, and then someone that was working over here would look at that and start another little sketch of something. Mm -hmm. And they would work very quickly and do, you know, a, a, a number of works on a Saturday afternoon, and then yeah. they would sell them all. <laughs> so people would come over and they, they would sell their, sell their work out of their studio. And... Uh, so I was interested just in this kind of collaborative approach in terms of making. Yeah. But also his, uh, he was very influenced by Inuit art, mm -hmm. um, the landscape, uh, culture versus nature, mm -hmm. uh, and colonization. Is it important for you to, as an artist coming out of Calgary, to be to stay connected to that to that territory, um, to speak about that landscape? Yeah, the, I grew up in a very small town in Killam, Alberta. I was born in Killam and then in Carstairs where there were 500 people. So as a, as a child, you'd, I don't know, you'd go and play in the field for the day and yeah. <laughs> you have to invent your own kind of <clears throat> imaginative landscape yeah. because the culture isn't there it's to feed right it there. to you. So mm. it does, I think the landscape does imprint mm -hmm. uh, something and it really it's about this wide open space as yeah. well um in the west so yeah landscape landscape and and uh where you're from i think always has some kind of influence on on the work that you do and somehow though you still have to be able to to adapt because you do adapt your work you've brought it here to montreal and you've worked in french is that a difficult process um transforming it for a for a different context um, I think it's, for me, it's really interesting not to stay in one place. Um, I really believe in this idea. My grandfather, for example, was born in a covered wagon coming up from <laughs> oh the goodness. Oregon Trail. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, it's crazy it's that time. it's just, yeah. you know, two generations old where they're, you know, this kind of different life but I've always thought of that as kind of a metaphor of, of rolling when you're being you know um, the wagon rolling across the prairies or whatever so I, I believe in this kind of 
uh, continual transformation and where you are, where you make your work really always influences of course. what you do. And, yeah. and the live arts is really being in the present moment. Yeah. So walking to rehearsal or seeing something uh, that you find on the street that you pick up and bring into the rehearsal hall yeah. that becomes a part of the show, that happens yeah. on a regular basis with us. So we've, we've made work, um, created work in, in France as well and in Montreal and in Calgary. So each of those places that we go influences the work and, mm. and, and uh, yeah, helps to bring this kind of multiplicity to the work. Wonderful. Thank you very much for being with us, Mark. My pleasure. Thank you.